Erev Tov Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a lot of things that are breaking uh, here in Eastern Europe. Uh, Stormbringer is saying that the nights, uh, what is going on? Night snow with rain, tanks, and other armored vehicles moving to the northern, uh, to the north of Donetsk. Roaring motors. Uh, of course, uh, Stormbringer, you know, he does talk a lot about, about things that are going on in Ukraine. I believe he lives there. But uh, also, uh, Mikhail. Mikhail is uh, uh, one of our uh, friends there. He's a journalist there who is actually always keeps up to date with the things going on in Ukraine because of living in this region of the world as well. Uh, he brought out just a little bit earlier uh, on, on several of them, Ukraine, hell broke loose in Donetsk front line. I actually sent a message to him, to Mikhail, just a few moments ago. And Mikhail uh, let me know that it is heavy artillery going off, howitzers are being fired, grad launchers are being used, and Ukraine is, is doing a major offensive. Uh, Pesky and, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Advitvika uh, is another uh, front line where a lot of fighting is going on in these particular areas right there. Also by the airport in Donetsk, heavy fighting is going on uh, there uh, also. And, um, and also we have here, he says, Ukraine artillery duel between UA and the DPR now in uh, Grolovka. That was only three hours ago that he reported that. And again, as I stated before, it just kind of seems very odd what we have going on here uh, with all the extra equipment headed into uh, Europe, into Poland right now. And we're seeing all these tanks that are already there, U.S. Army. Uh, in uh, Promoski, Poland, uh, self-propelled howitzers being offloaded from a flat car railway. Uh, you have Abram uh, tanks being uh, offloaded on the of, of the rail cars. There's your Abrams right there, uh, rolling into uh, into Poland there. Uh, and we got the, this is just to give you kind of like a little overview of just how much equipment came into Germany right there uh, a few days ago there, and. And, and again, the U.S., uh, Europe, not even worried about changing this to any other kind of colors or anything. It's just a matter of getting it there as quickly as possible and, I guess, deal with it some other day. Already happened. My good friend there over there, uh, he, another investigative journalist there, uh, he's showing it, uh, some of the Abrams right here, on the ground in Poland in all the green with all this nice brown... Uh, uh, desert camo uh, painted tanks out there that stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, so I guess if they do go head to head with Russia, they, they won't be hard to find, that's for sure. Uh, and of course, another thing that he brought out here that I thought very, very concerning to me, and that's right here, the uh, Blackhawks, uh, as well as the UH-60 uh, Blackhawk helicopters and the CH-47 uh, uh, Chinook, uh, are helicopters that are being moved in formation uh, also into the European Union there. Uh, we're, we're flying out, as you can see them taking off there. What's going on? What is going on? I mean, I cannot help but wonder what in the world is going on. Japan also getting a shipment of F-35 uh, uh, fighter uh, aircraft sent to them. Uh, we got some serious things happening all around the borders of Russia. And, uh, you know, you just cannot help but wonder what in the world is going on. Here it is right here. The U.S. sends F-35B Stealth Fighter Squadron to Japan, uh, covering on Russia's uh, eastern flank there. And, uh, and by the way, I, I did get a chance to listen to uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump, his briefing that he did today. Um, and uh, I have to say, the, what we had saw where we had read uh, in the uh, news the other day, which was also reported by Yahoo News, uh, that uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump did say that Russia was the one involved in the hacking. Uh, he does state that today. Uh, he does clarify it, though, in his press briefing, though, that, it, that he does not believe that it was actually Putin himself. Uh, but from what he can see, it is someone that actually hacked from Russia. That's what he is stating. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is one thing that I think that a lot of uh, people don't do in, in the media, which I, I think is important to note, is President-elect Donald Trump, he shows two sides when it comes to Putin. One, he says that 
you know, if he likes me, he says, that's not, that's not a bad thing. That's an asset because he's wanting to try to work with Russia. But he also, on the flip note of that, he says as well, uh, telling his audience there that, uh, you know, he said, look, he said, if, if, if there's a problem, he said, he said, do I think we'll get along? I hope we'll get along. He said, I can't say that we will, but I hope that we do. And he said, if, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing this, and maybe I wish I had I wish I had the uh, link up. By the way, this is this is the uh, fighting here on the live view map that's going on all around the uh, region there, Luhansk, uh, Donetsk, uh, the the whole area, all the front lines. Uh, according to what uh, Mikhail and others are saying right now, has just gone completely nuts over there in Ukraine, and uh, and I cannot help but wonder if Obama is not trying to provoke a major war there uh, to draw the U.S. into this conflict. Uh, I don't know if it's going to change the issue as far as Donald Trump getting into office. Going back to that statement, though, that I wanted to bring out, though, to you, uh, that Donald Trump was saying. Again, I'm just going to have to paraphrase it because I don't have it up here now uh, to be able to share that with you. Uh, but Donald Trump was uh, speaking about how that um, uh, he said that in, in, if there is a problem with, uh, with Putin, he said, who do you think would handle the situation better? Hillary or him? Now, he was dealing with a firmness is what he's talking about. But again, uh, in all fairness to uh, President-elect Donald Trump, I do not think that he is wanting to try to uh, have a war with, with uh, Putin. Uh, but at the same time, he's trying to show a tough stance. If he needs to be tough with Russia, he's willing to be tough. So I think that's where the balance really comes in and not so much as the way that, uh, that others have, uh, that have pointed it out that we were reporting the other day. Uh, but uh, but still yet, he has made it clear that if the need arises, he will address that need if that time comes, if he has to, to, to deal with Russia. Again, though, he does seem to want to try to have a good relationship with Russia, which the United States does need to cool down this situation. Now, real quick, though, before we get away from any all this anyway here, uh, it's still not calmed down with Russia yet either. Also, I think it's Mikhail. I'll look and see real quick. I think Mikhail's the one that reported this earlier. That uh, and it may, may maybe not. It may be my friend there on. Uh, it is. It's, it's it's on already happened. Uh, that another thing that happened that's very concerning, and that was that uh, the U.S. of course are flying uh, a mission there. I don't know where it's at now, but anyway. They uh, had a plane that flew out just recently over, um, right over, excuse me, over uh, Kaliningrad, uh, and it was intercepted by two Su-27 uh, fighter jets that came up. Uh, this, uh, I believe, this is that's Taiwan actually. There, I was trying to see if I could find that again there for you. Uh, here it is, right here. It's right here. The, uh, RC, uh, the U.S. RC-135W uh, surveillance aircraft has reportedly carried out operation tasks near Kaliningrad border this afternoon, uh, and that was intercepted by the Sukhoi uh, fighter jets, SU-27s, that did intercept them over Kaliningrad. So it looks like that the NATO is uh, starting to test, or the U.S. is anyway, is starting to test the resolve of uh, Russia, their reaction time, uh, and I would assume that what's going on right now, what I can ascertain from this, is that, uh, that the Obama administration, along with NATO and their allies there, they are wanting to uh, address the nuclear weapons that have been moved into Kaliningrad. And maybe we're not being told that, but I cannot help but wonder if this is why we're seeing such a rapid deployment of all this heavy equipment over into Europe, like like totally unprecedented, uh, completely unprecedented, very, very alarming to me uh, as well. And I know that they're considering Russia's uh, moves to be aggressive and provocative, but there again, it seems like Russia has only done tit for tat. The more the U.S. and, uh, and NATO uh, have, have moved things into the uh, Baltics, the more that Russia has responded, uh, you know, parallel with, with, the, with, the, with their own uh, uh, advancements. So it, it is something that's starting to get out of control, and I'm very concerned that, uh, especially after the UN vote here coming up here this coming Sunday, uh, which we will be there, uh, which, speaking of that as well, we, I'm going to be doing one more message here this evening about the United Nations upcoming uh, event there. So, 
Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to be a part of the work that we're doing, please visit our, visit our website, israelinewslive.org or .co.il in Israel, our website there. Uh, and also, uh, we'll be sharing with you, uh, you might want to check out my wife's channel there, Rise Up Children of God. She did an interview with a couple of Israeli ladies here the other day. Um, we'll try to get a clip in our next broadcast so you can see that very, very interesting interview uh, to show you the, 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 the thoughts of the Israeli people and what they think of the Palestinian situation and this two-state solution. I'm Stephen Benoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.